Welcome to Not Your Daughter's Witchcraft, podcast hosted by me, Lilith Amberley. If you're exploring witchcraft for something beyond the aesthetic, if some social media platforms make you cringe and say, that's not me, if you are looking to build a practice that enhances your life, then you, my friend, are in the right place. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Well, hey there, my witchy friends. Happy Beltane. And I have to start by saying that I hope this episode goes off without a hitch and I make sense through it all because I already recorded it once and then realized that my microphone was not turned on when I recorded it. So I had a pause, eat dinner with my family, told my husband, he's like, here's a drink. So he makes me a martini. I say, I'm not sure that that's going to help me remember, but it will certainly make it more interesting. So hopefully, again, this goes on as I planned. So happy Beltane. And I know that we are a couple days late, technically, but I'm recording this on Beltane. So today is Monday, May 1st. You're just hearing it on Wednesday, May 3rd. And we're definitely still in that high energy here in the Northern Hemisphere. So while Beltane is one day, I feel like that energy lasts at least a couple of days to a couple of weeks around the actual celebration. So today we're talking all about Beltane, but first I do have one question in the Witches Inn. So let's start there. Jennifer wrote, Dear Lilith, I heard you say that you are an herbalist. What are your go-to remedies to keep your family healthy? So first, thank you so much for that question, Jennifer. And I am happy to share a few of my go-to concoctions with you. Just remember to always do your own research before taking any herb. Even herbs that are considered safe aren't safe for everybody. So first, there's the daily brew, and that's literally what my parents call it. I am definitely not as faithful in making this every day as they are, but they are retired, they're older, and they drink this every day, and they literally have not been sick in years. So all that that is, a pot with about a cup and a half of water in it, and then you chop up some garlic and some ginger root. Add it to your pot, simmer it on low for about 20 minutes or so. Remove it from the heat, add some lemon balm, so dried lemon balm. You could use fresh if you had, I generally have dried. I do, I grow it and then I dry it. And maybe about a tablespoon or so, if it's big leaves, if it's chopped very finely, I would put maybe about a teaspoon in. And then some lemon juice. So you can either squeeze the juice from a lemon. A lot of times I'll just slice mine and throw a slice or two of the lemon in the pot. And then I put the lid back on and I let it steep for maybe about 10 minutes or so. When that's finished, I strain it and then I just add a little bit of honey. If you want, you don't have to. And that's it. I am also a believer in elderberry syrup. I make it myself and everybody in my house gets a tablespoon before heading out to school in the morning during cold and flu season. So that is a definite must have for me. Then when COVID was at its peak, I also made a tea for everyone every morning. It was a chai tea recipe but I also decocted some astragalus in it every day. Now, I can't say whether or not this is what kept COVID away because we definitely took other precautions. We were masking, we were social distancing, we were doing all the things, but we did not get COVID in our house at all. And that included my husband who was working in a healthcare setting. The other thing that I would mention, and it's not really a preventative, but I want to say that I use chamomile in a tea for just about everything from congestion to fever, stomach aches, pain relief, you name it, I will try chamomile for it. I had a hysterectomy several years ago and I do not tolerate pain medication at all. No matter what it is, it makes me sick. So I did check with my surgeon first to make sure that this would be okay, but I drank a quart of chamomile tea every single day for that first post-operative week. And it worked really well for me. I mean, I had some minor discomfort, but that was about it. So those are just a few. If I think of more in a future episode, I will I will add some more because there's a lot, but those are my go-to ones almost all of the time. Let's talk about Beltane. What is it? Beltane is one of those cross-quarter holidays that you'll hear witches and other pagans talking about. And a cross-quarter holiday is the halfway point between a solstice and an equinox. 
So between winter solstice and spring equinox, you have Imbolc. Then between the spring equinox and summer solstice, you have Beltane. And then between the summer solstice and the autumnal equinox, you have Lamas or Lunasaw, which are not the same thing. They are two different holidays, but both celebrated at the same time. And then between the autumnal equinox and the winter solstice, you have Samhain. Beltane is a fire festival, and fire festivals are those cross-quarter holidays that we talk about in many modern pagan groups. And even though this is celebrated by modern witches and pagans, Beltane is rich in history. It's rich in tradition. It spans thousands of years and cultures around the world. And it's often thought of as the beginning of summer. Now, I know when we look at the calendar, you think summer starts at the summer solstice, but there's a reason that the summer solstice is called midsummer. So Beltane is closely associated with fertility, and that is fertility of all kinds. There's definitely a sexual connotation to this holiday in many traditions, but it doesn't have to be that way. This is about abundance in all of its forms. It's a time for manifestation. It is a time for love, and that includes self-love, and we're going to talk a lot about that here in just a few minutes. First, let's talk about some of the traditions associated with Beltane. Like I said, this is a fire festival, and the Beltane fire was and still is an important aspect in many cultures of the celebration. It's believed that fire has this power to protect us, and it protects us. It's said to protect us from evil spirits and all sorts of things. And in less modern times, it was believed to keep people and keep livestock healthy. Now, today we know that it takes more than magic to keep us healthy, but it's definitely part of it. It also represented triumph. The fires would be lit at night and represented the light winning over the darkness. One of the customs that went along with the Beltane fire was jumping over it, which was believed to bring good luck. That's, of course, provided that you didn't fall into the fire, then your luck was not very good. So if you're going to give that a try, go small on this one. Another common item associated with Beltane is the Maypole. In some parts of the world, May Day or May 1st is celebrated by dancing around a Maypole. It's believed by some that the ritual of dancing around the pole has pagan roots and represents the union of the god and the goddess. And traditionally, you'd have young women or maidens who would decorate the pole with flowers and ribbons, and the young men would compete to be the first to climb up the pole and claim the prize at the top. And the energy then of that dance that they did around the pole was meant to represent the male and female coming together to create new life. I know a lot of witches who go out in the morning of Beltane and collect the dew to cleanse their face. It's known to bring out our inner beauty. And we're going to talk about some Beltane plants, you know, talking about going outside here in just a few minutes. But first, I want to share just a bit more about some of the celebrations that go along with this holiday. So many cultures, as I've said, around the world celebrate this holiday and have some sort of celebration to go along with it, generally at this very beginning of the month of May. And I'm going to share a few that I'm more familiar with. Certainly there are many, many more than this. In the British Isles, you're going to see those Beltane fires burning. It's a time of feasting and dancing and just having a lot of fun. It's really a time of celebration. People decorate their homes with flowers and greenery, and this is where you'll see those maypoles in the town squares. If you go to Germany, you're going to find some people celebrating Walpurgis Night, which I'm probably saying wrong, especially after drinking my martini. Interesting to me is so many other pagan holidays, both a traditional pagan holiday, and this is also the celebration of a saint. Again, you're going to find large bonfires, dancing, music, and according to legend, witches would gather on the Brocken, which is the highest peak in the Harz Mountains, on the night of April 30th. Some say that they would gather there to celebrate the arrival of spring, but others believe that this was the last night that they could cast spells before the autumn. In Mexico, you have the celebration of May Day. And I will say I am not familiar as to whether or not there is any religious or spiritual aspect of this in Mexico, so I apologize and I don't want to misspeak. But I do know that May Day is celebrated and it is celebrated as Labor Day. In fact, May Day is a time to celebrate the labor movement in nearly 100 countries around the world. So it's associated more with political rallies, although there's still celebration. There are street fairs, parades, things like that, and most businesses will be closed. Then in the United States, Beltane is celebrated as part of the May Day festivities, and today you will most often see this in the pagan community. 
I'm just thinking of other things. You may see certainly flower festivals around this time of year and just people simply beginning to enjoy the warmer weather, the longer days, picnics, things like that. We have many deities from various religions and cultures associated with the holiday. The first one that always comes to mind for me is Mary, so Mother Mary. And I know, according to the Christian faith, that Mary is obviously not a deity, but you know what? She probably should be. In Catholicism, the entire month of May is devoted to Mary. And I can remember as a little girl, each church would have a May procession with a May queen, and they would carry a crown of flowers for the statue of Mary. There would be a procession. Generally, you would start, you would go throughout the church, then outside through the streets, and you'd end up back in the church at the statue of the Blessed Mother, and the flowers would be placed on her head. So definitely a time of veneration, and not only by the church, but also in people's homes. People would take this time to clean off their statues of Mary that they had in the garden and really freshen up that space. Then, of course, we have Maya. So there was a Greek goddess named Maya and a Roman goddess named Maya, whom the month is named after. In Greek mythology, Maya was mother to Hermes, and in Roman mythology, the mother to Mercury. And her name means both great and mother. You have Flora, the Roman goddess of flowers, so very apropos for this time of year. And of course, all of the other fertility deities. Who can forget Pan when you think about Beltane? Which reminds me of one of my favorite Beltane songs, Green and Gray by Dom the Bard. Go listen to it if you hadn't. I will post a link in the show notes. So let's talk a little bit about incorporating the energy of this season into our magic. And I want to spend quite a bit of time talking about the magic of self-love. But we're going to go ahead and start with some correspondences. One of the plants that I often associate with Beltane is the hawthorn tree. I miss my hawthorn trees. Before I moved to my current location, I had three hawthorn trees in my yard, and they just felt so incredibly magical. In Celtic mythology, the hawthorn tree was believed to be a portal between the worlds and was often called the fairy tree. And legend has it that if you cut down a hawthorn tree, the fairies are not going to be very happy with you. I'm also fairly certain that you aren't supposed to bring the branches of a hawthorn tree into your house. I don't remember where I read that or where I heard it, but I know it's definitely a thing. So hawthorn flowers, hawthorn berries, these represent fertility, protection, and magic. And speaking of magic, Beltane is one of the two times of year when the veil is said to be the thinnest between the worlds and a high time for doing magic. Now, for me, I definitely feel this more at Samhain than I do at Beltane, but for some people, this is definitely their favorite time for doing magic, casting spells, and communicating with the spirit world. And Hawthorne can definitely help you with all of those things. Another plant that I associate with Beltane is the rose, symbolizing love and passion. I associate the colors yellow and gold with this time of year because it's the return of the sun with its warmth and its radiance and green, all things green. This is when the earth really springs back to life, when we think of the green man and the green woman. When I think of crystals, one of the first I think is rose quartz because I think of love. And really importantly around this, again, I think of self-love with Beltane. So there's definitely that element of celebration with other people, but this doesn't necessarily need to mean with a partner or anything like that. I associate this time with self-love. You can look to green aventurine for representing growth and abundance, citrine, which is very much associated with the sun, again, abundance and joy. Use these to connect to the energies of the season and to enhance your magical practice. You know, this is a time of renewal. It's welcoming summer and the growth that brings. It's about human desire for connection to the earth and that magic of everything natural. So when we think about the energy of the season, think manifestation, think abundance, and again, think love. If you go back to the time around the winter solstice, that's where we're going real deep and you're grounded and you're planting the seeds. And this is the time that those seeds start coming to fruition. It's a time to align our own energy with that of the earth. Get outside, spend some time in nature, focus on your breathing, sit down on the earth if you can, or lie down on the earth, breathe with it, really get in alignment with that energy. And we can take advantage of that energy and really begin to focus in on in our intentions, visualize those goals, and get things done. 
So now I want to talk about how we can apply some of that energy in our spell work. And I really want to specifically talk about self-love here. So think about self-love, self-care practices. This is all about focusing on our inner beauty, our self-worth, our confidence. Some ways that you can use this and capture that energy throughout the year is to take some of those materials, those correspondences that really align with the energy. Again, you know, your rose petals, pink candles, green candles, your citrine, rose quartz. If you can collect some of them on Beltane, like the rose petals, that's great. But even if you can't, get them outside, place them under the sun, help them to absorb some of that Beltane energy and charge them with your intentions. And then you can use them in your self-love spells throughout the rest of the season. When I think of the energy of Beltane, I think of our heart chakra. Again, focus on that inner beauty, self-worth, the abundant aspects of our life. This is a great time to do affirmations that boost our self-worth. So we're going to be focusing on rituals that help to align with our inner beauty. Some simple spells for self-love that you can do. Let's start with a candle spell. So think pink candle, a green candle. Pink is fairly self-explanatory when it comes to love, but green is for two reasons. One, green is definitely about growth and prosperity, and that can mean inner growth and inner prosperity as well as the external. But green is also associated with our heart chakra. And sometimes that throws people off a little bit because you generally think of your heart, you, know, you think red or pink, but the chakra is actually aligned with the color green. So you're going to take your candle, inscribe your intention onto the candle, or if you want, create a sigil and inscribe it onto your candle. Maybe dress it with some rose oil. Now think of what that affirmation or your intention is. Maybe it is to love myself and accept myself completely, something along those lines. And what you're going to do is take a few breaths, focus on that intention and light your candle. Then speak that affirmation several times. Then either let the candle burn down by itself, or you can snuff it out. And if you're going to snuff it out and relight it, repeat the affirmation every time you light it. And of course, don't leave a candle burning unattended. Another simple ritual you can do is a bath. Put your rose petals in, light the candles. This is the time to take care of yourself. If you don't have a bath, take an herbal bundle and hang it in your shower. Inhale that scent and really begin to feel that energy around you. But if you can take a bath, if you have that luxury, do it. This is the ideal time. Make it picture perfect. Put the candles around, like I said. Get your rose petals in there. And while you're soaking, really focus in on yourself. Feel your body in the water and be thankful for it. And this reminds me to talk about a mirror spell as I'm thinking about taking a bath. So when I moved into the home that I have and I walked into the bathroom, I was doing the walkthrough and looking at the house the first thing that I thought is, oh my gosh, this is such a blessing. And the second thing that I thought, ugh, this is such a curse. Because I have a really beautiful bathroom. And the former owners left a very large mirror that is right behind my bathtub. And when you walk in, it's striking. It's big and I love it. But the other thing is when I'm getting in and out of the tub, I have to look at myself. <laughs> and that's always a bit jarring to me. But this is the perfect time for a mirror spell. So stand in front of the mirror, light a candle, really focus on your intention. Again, what is the affirmation? I love and I accept myself. And it's one thing to say those words, but it's another thing to look in the mirror and look into your own eyes and say the words and repeat that affirmation then every time you pass by the mirror that day. So again, this holiday is one of celebration. It's one of self-love to me, and I hope that you will also find that self-love magic and everything that this time of year has to offer. So until next week, stay witchy and take good care of yourself. Now, before you go, I want to make sure that we stay connected. So go ahead, join my VIP list. It's witchlifeacademy.lilithamberley.com forward slash resources. The link will be in the show notes. And I want you to join my VIP list because when you do, you're going to have access to all of my free resources, the ones that are there now and the ones that I publish in the future. You're also going to have access to any upcoming offers, programs, courses, etc. that are going to come out. So I don't want you to miss that. I want to make sure that we stay connected. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and give the show a rating. That's so important, especially for newer podcasts. I would really, really appreciate that. Until next time, I hope you have a most wonderful and magical day.